Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to episode 65 of the Nindy Nation podcast. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. Nindy Nation is your source for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch and a part of the Nintendo Village. Each week, we'll take a quick look at every new indie game hitting the eShop, and then in our second half, we'll dive deep into the depths of the eShop, dig around through the hundreds of games on sale, and share our picks for some of the best deals around. This week, we're covering new releases and sales for May 16th through the 22nd. Nindy Nation posts to podcast feeds on Sunday evening, and if you want to see these games in action, go check out the Nindy Nation YouTube channel where each episode is posted complete with game trailers and footage on Monday. While you're there, check out our Let's Play Nindy's videos, and for a quick peek into what's keeping our Joy-Cons synced, take a look at the Nindy's We Love series. If you want to chat about Nindies, or if you picked up something you learned about in one of our episodes, tell us about it on Twitter, at Nindy Nation, where you can also find us posting deals on Indies as soon as they go live. For everything else Nintendo-related, head on over to the Nintendo Village where they are pumping out daily articles, reviews, features, news, videos, and podcasts about all things Nintendo. You can find it all at the thenintendovillage.com, and we thank them for hosting Nindy Nation. Each week, a handful of games are released without any warning, and sometimes there are actually hidden gems in there you don't want to miss. That's not always the case, but we don't know if we don't look. So to kick things off, let's start with the neglected Nindies released since episode 64. Speaking of 64, fans of Star Fox take note. Star Horizon is a $10 on-rails space shooter that looks gorgeous. No Gravity Games is the publisher, and so far their output on the Switch has been pretty spotty with releases like Warlocks 2 and X-Order, but Star Horizon looks pretty slick and is a title I might be picking up for myself. If you jump on it quick though, it's only 8 bucks through May 22nd. Hard Cube is a new release by Big Way for $7 even that plays like Marble Madness. You roll a ball around an obstacle course to get to the other side, and it doesn't look half bad. How's that for a back-of-the-box quote? Travel Mosaics 3 Tokyo Animated is a nonogram puzzle, side note, I have no idea what that means, with a bunch of characters that look like they were ripped right out of the movie Zootopia. It's published by Jet Dogs and released for $7.99, but I don't think anyone's really going to buy this. Speaking of nobody's going to buy this, check out this overpriced crapware rock block courtesy of one of our favorite new crapware publishers, Sayback. Blackjack is a $10 blackjack game that looks like it forgot you can play this for free on just about every platform with a screen, or, you know, in real life. Roulette is a $10 roulette game that looks like something you'd have seen packed in alongside Windows 98, where the most gameplay you ever gave it was accidentally launching it when you meant to uninstall it. Bomb, with an exclamation mark, is a $10 Bomberman ripoff that looks awful, and Piano is a $10, uh app, I guess, that turns your Switch into a one-octave touchscreen piano and claims to teach you nine classic songs, which I'm sure are all just public domain. And as a musician, I can say with confidence that no person is going to tap on highlighted piano keys on a Nintendo Switch and see any skills whatsoever that translate to playing on an actual piano. This... I don't know what this is, but I feel sorry for anyone who accidentally buys it. Dear Sabek, please stop. Signed, Nindy Nation. And that's actually it for this week's neglected Nindies. Star Horizon looks pretty cool, but the rest, especially those Sabek turds, probably didn't ever plan on marketing their games anyways. Oh, Sabek, I was curious about you when you showed up a couple of months ago, but I think it's now clear that your releases are akin to the goose poop I have to maneuver around when going for a walk in my neighborhood. But I don't like to dog on publishers here, so let's keep this train rolling and check out the new releases for May 16th through the 22nd. 
Unfortunately, Team 17 could not have found a worse time to release Golf With Your Friends because we already have a highly anticipated mini-golf title coming out later this week, but more on that later. Golf With Your Friends is a 9-course mini-golf game with support for up to 12 players, which is cool, but for what it is, it seems overpriced at 20 bucks. On May 20th, we have a single release by Rocket Vulture that is next in a massive list of Overcooked-like games called Cannibal Cuisine. <laughs> Overcooked-like might just be a new genre with, you know, moving out, totally reliable delivery service, and so many others, but you'll cooperate with others to create dishes that will please the almighty Hu Chu Bu, and while it may not look quite as fleshed out as others in this genre, at least it's half the price at $9.74, so maybe consider this one if you want a light Overcooked-like. Can we coin that term now? Moving on to May 21st, and the Big Thursday drop is already here, with one of my favorite new Nindy publishers, Playstige Interactive. Prestige. Worldwide. Why? 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 Who kicks things off with what I think is their best-looking release yet. Apparently, it's on-rails space shooter week because that's also what Flexteria is, but this one seems to have a little bit more going for it, and it might feature some more open 3D spaces akin to Star Fox's all-range mode. With 20 levels spanning story, survival, time attack, and obstacle race mode, there's a bunch of stuff to do here, and the price point of only $6.99 is very enticing. Consider Flexteria among the top of this week's recommendations. Warped Core Studio brings their take on titles like Runbow or Speedrunners to the Switch with Aqua Lungers for $14.99. You and three other players will race across various cartoony, pirate-themed worlds in search of treasure while avoiding obstacles and trying to sabotage your opponents. Aqua Lungers looks really fun, but I don't think it has online multiplayer, so maybe stick this one on your wish list and pick it up when we can all emerge from our homes and get together for some couch co-op once again. Ooh, and we've got another solid pick for the week. This one coming from publisher Digerati and developer Kaiswear. It's actually a double pack of two retro pixel style action games, Skelly Celeste and Stranium Immortally for $19.99. Skelly Celeste is a fast paced score attack game with half hack and slash and half run and gun gameplay, and Stranium Immortally is a top down twin stick shooter with, wait for it, procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. You get both of these for 20 bucks, and they both look like fun action and score attack based throwbacks. I like it. And if you can believe it, here comes another strong showing from a developer publisher that's fairly new to the Switch. For $17.99, you can strap into a World War I Red Baron era fighter plane and take to the skies with All In Games Red Wings Aces of the Sky. Featuring levels based on historical events, you can play as a fighter in either side of the war, tackle various challenges, or battle in split-screen dogfighting. I get serious Crimson Skies vibes here, and that was one of my favorite games from the original Xbox. Give me more of that and a cool cel-shaded art style, and I'm all in, pun intended, on Red Wing's Aces of the Sky. And then the hits just keep on coming because Fire Sprite also makes their eShop debut on May 21st with The Persistence, which takes the Nindy Trifecta formula into a genre I've yet to see, first-person sci-fi survival horror. In an ever-changing futuristic space station, you attempt to get your ship back online and make it out alive while shooting your way through an unlimited amount of monstrosities that are created by the space station itself. When you die, you take what you've learned, upgrade your character, and try again as a new host. <laughs> That's right, we've got a first-person shooter with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. <laughs> got a lot of these this week. Get ready for that soundbite, friends. The Persistence has really nice visuals and a formula that works great alongside the Switch's pick-up-and-play format, but it launches for $27, so this one might be a good title to put on your wish list until we see it go up for sale. Luckily, you can save yourself $10 because this next release by 8 Floor Games is yet another in their Lost Artifacts series, this one called Lost Artifacts Time Machine. It's a mobile game that definitely looks the part. You manage resources, waste your own time, and just tap away on the screen, and you know what? 
you're not gonna buy this anyway. Next, fans of side-scrolling shoot-em-ups might have an enticing title releasing on May 21st when Polarity Flow drops Steel Rain for $14.99. My biggest complaint here is that the art style couldn't be more generic inside of the space shoot-em-up genre, but otherwise, it includes a ton of levels and a level editor, daily challenges, skill trees, and even upgrades and crafting. I'm hard-pressed to give it a recommendation without playing it for myself, but if the gameplay is tight and the worlds carry more visual variety than we see in the trailers, Steel Rain could have potential as a standout in the overcrowded shmup genre. Circle Entertainment is a publisher out of Hong Kong with quality that is all over the place, and that makes it hard to tell if the upcoming pixel art action adventure called Arrest of a Stone Buddha is going to be worth the $15 they're asking for. It takes place in 1976 France, where you play as a hitman chasing a lead and killing everyone in your way. It mixes simple run-and-gun gameplay with storytelling and even some life simulation elements. Again, can't tell if Arrest of a Stone Buddha will pan out, but it's got the makings of a pretty unique little indie. And everything about this next release is confusing to me. <laughs> Monster Prom XXL is a competitive dating simulation about a bunch of monsters in high school. It's developed by Beautiful Glitch and published by Those Awesome Guys, so at least both of their names are Nindy Nation approved. The game itself has seen a lukewarm reception, hovering around low to mid-70s for a score everywhere I've looked. I guess when it comes to whether or not Monster Prom XXL is worth $15.99, we're just gonna have to file this one under fans of the genre, etc, etc, blah blah blah. You know, I feel old because I remember when the original Myst was released. The static screen, pre-rendered backgrounds that built one of the first original first-person point-and-click adventures was a sight to behold 25 years ago. In 2000, it was rebuilt inside of a 3D engine so that you could actually walk around the world in real time, and now that release is hitting the eShop on May 21st for $15.99 as Real Mist Masterpiece Edition. I, uh, I don't know. I didn't care for Mist back in 1995, and I didn't care for it again in 2000, so now that there's an overflow of point-and-click adventure games, I don't really see any reason to recommend it in 2020. Resistance Studios' release this week does most of the talking for me because it's called Pushy and Pulley and Blockland. How about that? By yourself or with a friend in co-op, you walk around 50 top-down levels in a very colorful, cheery, 16-bit world made of blocks, and guess what? You have to push or pull the various blocks or bombs to clear enemies before moving on to the next stage. It looks simple, it looks fun, and it launches with a 20% discount for 8 bucks. Wrapping up the releases for May 21st, I saved the best for last. A title by Triband that launches 25% off for $14.99 is already in my shopping cart because I have been waiting for months to play What the Golf. Coined as the, quote, golf game for people who hate golf, end quote, you start out in a simple mini-golf stage before things spiral out of control into a ridiculous physics game where you're hitting just about anything you can imagine towards the pen, causing havoc and hilarity along the way. In stressful times, there really are few games as welcome as What the Golf, and that's why it earns this week's Nindy Nation Pick of the Week. But we're not done yet. There are three more titles left to cover this week, and they all drop on Friday, May 22nd, starting with Monstrum by Sedesco, which is a super spooky first-person survival game where you have to outrun and outsmart monsters through a randomly generated cargo ship. I've said this before, but I just don't do the spookies. I guess it has the randomly generated thing going for it, which adds replay value. But with so many of these games already on the eShop, it's hard to recommend one that looks so generic. Especially when it's $30. And Busy Bee Nestor Yavorsky is back this week with another cheap and clever arcade puzzle game called Animal Up for $1.49. This cool little game is a great example of why you should check out the Nindy Nation podcast on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel. It just makes a lot more sense if you can see this one. In each stage, you start at the bottom of a vertically scrolling level and you pass helpless animals from one floor to the next while avoiding various obstacles and doing so before the rising flood catches up to you. Like all of Nestor's Switch releases, these are nice little well-made games, and I'm willing to bet that if you look at his list of games on the eShop, you're bound to find one that tickles your fancy. 
And rounding out yet another great week of new releases is none other than Rattalaka Games with Concept Destruction, developed by Thin Ice Games and released for $4.99. Concept Destruction is an arcade-style destruction derby racer that takes place on a tabletop where everything is made out of cardboard, from the cars, to the obstacles and ramps, to the levels themselves. I get a lot of vibes of San Francisco Rush just in the way the physics and the cars work on the track, and I think it looks like a pretty fun time. So there's 18 brand new Nindies for you this week. What do you think? What the Golf, Red Wings, and Flexteria are my picks for the week, but I'm very curious about the Persistence, Steel Rain, and the oddly titled Arrest of a Stone Buddha. You can find impressions for these titles and many more Nindies over on Twitter at Nindy Nation, and if you happen to get your hands on any of this week's releases, I'd love to hear what you think there as well. But we're not done yet. Oh no, you know what time it is. You've got the neglected Nindies, you've got the new Nindies, but now it's time for the Nindies on sale, and we had to dig even deeper this week because most of the games mentioned over the last three episodes are still on sale through May 25th. So go check out the last 10 minutes or so from episodes 62, 63, and <laughs> to hear even more great deals. This week, there are 564 games on sale at the old eShop, and it's our job to bring the best deals to your attention. These could be newer releases seeing their first discount, solid Nindies at their lowest price yet, or just must-own titles on sale that are ripe for the picking. Either way, all of these games carry the Nindy Nation seal of approval, and they're all on sale through at least May 22nd. We'll start with a Forever Entertainment twofer, if you will. If you purchase any Forever Entertainment title, you can get Panzer Dragoon Remake for 20% off or $19.99. It's good timing because Biolab Wars, the Contra-like run and gunner that has a Let's Play on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, is 75% off for only 49 cents. Citizens, buy Biolab Wars, then log back into the eShop and your discount for Panzer Dragoon will be applied at the checkout. Biolab Wars is a no-brainer at $0.49, cents, but while I really enjoy Panzer Dragoon and the new patch is excellent, I'd say this one is only for fans of the original or for those really curious about what made this one of the premier games for the Sega Saturn. Cosmic Star Heroine, one of my favorite JRPGs of all time, is 90% off for $1.49, and I cannot stress enough how wonderful this game is for any fan of JRPGs. Even if that isn't your style of game, but you like a good sci-fi story with excellent characters and a stellar soundtrack, you really can't go wrong with Cosmic Star Heroine. Please, try it out. Revenge of the Bird King, another title with a Let's Play on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, is 99% off for one cent. <laughs> It blends a couple of old 8-bit style genres together, making a side-scrolling action game with a couple of unique adventure twists up its sleeve. It's a penny. Buy it. Saturday Morning RPG is what I like to call an RPG for people who usually don't play RPGs, kind of like Earthbound or Y2K. The mechanics are simple, and the game is light-hearted with a slew of 80s pop culture references. If you want to take a trip through an RPG this Saturday morning, you can do so for only 99 cents. And as mentioned earlier, our pick of the week is What the Golf, and it launches with a 25% discount, so if you're considering it, pick it up now while it's $14.99. Axiom Verge is one of the best Metroidvanias on the Switch and an absolute marvel of a game being developed by only one person. If you've played other exploration platformers and you want something new, Axiom Verge is wonderful and it's 40% off for $11.99. Willy Jetman Astro Monkey's Revenge is one of the more unique side-scrolling action games available on the eShop. As the admittedly silly title suggests, you do get a jetpack, which makes any game instantly better, and Willy Jetman is a fairly new game which is why its 30% discount makes it a great pickup for only $10.49. Startide is a top-down shoot-'em-up we featured in, I think, the second Nindies We Love video. It's a little janky, but I really like its approach to boss rush-style gameplay inside the vertically scrolling shoot-'em-up genre. It also has a lot of different types of levels and bosses to tackle, and a very deep upgrade system. 
As I said in that original video, I don't think it's worth the MSRP of 10 bucks, but it's only 99 cents right now, which is 90% off, and it's an easy recommendation at that price. Donut County is one I've recommended before on the podcast, and I'm going to continue to do so anytime it's at least half off. Donut County is just as much about the gameplay, which is kind of like a backwards Katamari Damacy, as it is the story, the characters, and the music. It's a wonderful game, if on the short side of maybe about two hours, but there's more to do after the credits roll, and even if you just play the campaign one time, $6.50 is still a great price for the experience. You know by now that I'm not big into the spooky games, and you also know that I'm not big into the adventure or quote walking simulator games, so that should tell you that me recommending What Remains of Edith Finch means it's something special. It's spooky, but it also tells one of the most intriguing stories I've ever experienced in a video game. Like Donut County, it's also short, but you'll get at least a few hours out of it, and What Remains of Edith Finch is also half off for $9.99. And last but not, well, okay, yeah, this one is the least. I, I bring it up because there have been a lot of newcomers to the podcast recently, so you may not have heard me mention this series before. Sparkle 3 Genesis is the third entry in this weird little amoeba game that PlayStation fans may think looks a lot like Flow. You move this little ooze thing around, and you suck up anything that's smaller than you while avoiding anything that's bigger than you. Eventually you level up, and you do it again with bigger things all around. It's not really a very good game at all, but here's the thing. This game is chill as f Sparkle 3 Genesis or Sparkle Evo are a couple of my go-to games when I have no idea what I want to play and I just want to be mindless for a few minutes. And to that end, with a 90% discount, I'd say Sparkle 3 Genesis is definitely worth the 49 cents. And that's it. That's all the games we missed, all the games we're looking forward to, and all of the games at a deal that you can't afford to miss. As I mentioned a minute ago, there's been a massive increase in listeners and viewers recently. Thank you so much. I love seeing all of your feedback and continue to encourage any input, whether it be about the games we discuss, my views on those games, or on the podcast itself. You can leave comments in YouTube or chat with me directly on Twitter at Nindy Nation. And what's that? YouTube, you say? Oh. That's right, the Nindy Nation YouTube channel is a great place to get your fix for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. We've got Let's Plays, we've got a series called Nindies We Love, and each episode of this podcast publishes on YouTube every Monday with trailers for everything we discussed one day after the audio podcast hits feeds and the Nintendo Village. Speaking of, Nindy Nation is brought to you by the Nintendo Village, and we love them for it. If you're looking for Nintendo news, reviews, feature articles, or even shows and other podcasts, the Nintendo Village does it all under the umbrella of becoming your home for everything Nintendo. You can find everything that they do over at the nintendovillage.com or on Twitter at Village Nintendo. But with that, we've arrived at the last stop for this week's episode of Nindy Nation. Thank you so much again for your time and for sharing us with others. You can find Nindy Nation on all major podcast services, on Twitter at Nindy Nation, and on YouTube where we post new content at least once a week. We'll be back next week with another indie filled episode, but until then, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 65, and whether you're looking for a quick game to keep you busy for a few minutes, or you're looking for your next favorite game to carry you for hours on end, we'll be right here to bring you just the Nindies you need to keep your Joy-Cons synced. <laughs>